A patient with type zero, for example, is a patient that will have only one copy of SMN2. And those patients are born extremely, extremely weak. So if you have a newborn that is born right away with extreme weakness, with contractures of the joints, with fasciculations, that is this little tongue movement, um, the patient may not have reflexes already, deep tendon reflexes, and the patient requires breathing and feeding support right away, that's a type zero. That's somebody that you have to think about as a mate, type zero. A type one, it's a patient that you will be thinking about the things that you're looking at are the poor muscle tone, the fasciculations in the tongue, and the fact that many of those babies will not hold their head by three months of age. So by three months, most babies will be holding their head upright without, you know, without any support. But if the baby is not, that's a key uh, sign, a key uh, thing that we have to think, that the pediatricians have to think about spinal muscular atrophy. What I say that because sometimes the pediatrician don't check reflexes ne necessarily, but if the pediatrician is saying that there is neck weakness with neck low tone or hypotonia, with fasciculation that has to make you think right away spinal muscle atrophy. And then you go to a type two because type two is usually present after six months of age. So between six to 18 months of age, those kids are the typical presentation that I have had over the years is my baby was doing everything perfect, but when it got to the time to stand up and walk, did not happen. So they are able to hold their head, they're able to sit up, some of them are able even to stand, but they can never cruise, they can never walk. And that's where a type two, clinically, you have to think about a type two. A type three is a patient that walks. So it may be diagnosed extremely late because it happens after 18 months of age, but usually they get diagnosed after eight, 10, 15 years of age. And it's a patient that presents with progressive muscle weakness. So falls, clumsiness, and, and difficulties ambulating is the main thing. So there are those key things for each type that I think that that pediatricians st still have to think about. And I wish that there was less, I think the referral to physical therapies is important, but I think the refer referral with, to physical therapies has to go with a referral to a neurologist in my mind to be able to diagnose these patients early. Mm -hmm.